my friends, welcome to Summit. It's Palm Sunday. Lent is almost over, but we got this one awesome liturgical celebration before the season of Lent ends. And this week sets us up for Easter Sunday. So we're going to get a gospel before you even normally think Mass is starting this week. There's going to be a first reading. There's going to be a, a psalm, the second reading, and then another gospel. And that, that second gospel is going to focus on Jesus' passion and death. There's going to be maybe a couple different people reading different parts. You may have some parts as the crowd. This is one week where if you can go to Mass, get like a ticket, reserve a spot, do whatever you need to do with your parish's social distancing measures, go participate in this incredible liturgy that causes us to step back, to reflect, and to contemplate our own death, Jesus' death, and the life that comes after both. We're diving in just to the second reading this week because it is a great reading and it is maybe one of the oldest Christian hymns in existence. There is a lot of evidence that this particular section of Philippians existed before St. Paul wrote it down in his letter to the Philippians. So as you read through these words, know that this was probably sung by early Christian communities immediately after Jesus' death and resurrection, if not a couple years afterwards. It is a hymn to the humility of Christ and God's exaltation, God the Father's exaltation of the Son, Jesus. Now, I know there's a couple key words, humility and obedience. That Jesus Christ, the Son, was obedient to the will of the Father, that he should go and teach, suffer, die, and rise from the dead. And that by taking on human flesh, we then could, in Christ, take on his divinity and enter into eternal life in heaven with the mystery brought into the mystery of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. This is profound stuff. Who are you obedient to? What are you obedient to? At the end of the second reading, there's this section that really gets emphatic. And if you've got a good lector reading it, they're going to get pumped up and worked up for this this last part of the reading. Because it talks about Jesus' humility, but then the hymn goes on to say this. Because of this, because of the death that Jesus experienced on the cross, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and those on the earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Are you obedient? to what Jesus asks of you? Is there power in that name for you? At its most trivial, we use the name Jesus Christ just as vocal filler, sometimes as profanity, sometimes as exclamation. But that name is powerful. Are you obedient to what that name means? Are you humble enough to accept what that name means, that God saves, that God saves you? Because that's what we're talking about this week. Because if this week is not true, if this is not true, that Jesus Christ became obedient even to death on a cross and was raised from the dead so that in his name, everything would be obedient. Everything would be subject. Every knee in heaven, on earth, below the earth, every tongue must confess Jesus Christ is Lord. Are you humble enough to make that profession? Because if Jesus Christ is Lord and Lord of your life and and Savior of your life, then we have to be obedient of what resurrection and discipleship ask of us. Can you honestly say that Jesus Christ is Lord? Because I think right now there's a lot of us that experience death. We experience places where we we are carrying a cross, perhaps. Maybe little ways, maybe big ways. And we're wondering what's going to save us from that. But here it is. Jesus Christ, who desires to carry our cross with us, to carry the cross with us. What does that look like for you? Are you humble enough to be saved? Because Jesus was humble enough to save you. He didn't need to. That's the thing we forget as we read through the Passion, is that at any moment, Jesus could have said, stop. At any moment, Jesus could have ended it. At any moment, it could have just been over. It wasn't. And 
he did that so that you and I would have what he has, which is an intimate relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. As you listen to these readings this week, that's the only thing worthy of reflecting on. Jesus died and rose for me and offers me a gift of life, humbly, because he doesn't have to. But the only way we reject it is through pride, is through refusing to bow the knee at the name of Jesus, refusing to be obedient to what Jesus asks of us. Because the Christian life we think is too hard, it's, it's too difficult, I might get persecuted, because the law of love is too, too much, because there's just too many nuances that I, I struggle with. I won't bow. Will you bow this week? If you go to Good Friday Mass, you might venerate a cross. I don't know what that'll look like this year with COVID stuff. But even after Palm Sunday, maybe I, that's what you do, is you spend some time just looking at a cross or a crucifix. Because becoming obedient to Jesus is to be like Jesus, which is to approach a cross and die to the things in our life that are preventing us from having life. And in letting those things go, we find it. Are you willing to be humble enough to accept that burden, knowing that beyond it, because this is the truth of Palm Sunday that leads to Easter, knowing that beyond the areas where we have to die, there is always life and life eternal. I'll see you back here one more week for an Easter Sunday reflection on Summit. Enjoy Holy Week, my friends. Know that I'm praying for you. I'll see you back here for Easter and the resurrection next week.